the single biggest story of National Signing Day and really even the lead up to National Signing Day, it was the Florida Gators. There is no way to put it, but Florida has had a disastrous, disastrous about last probably six to eight weeks in the lead up to National Signing Day. National Signing Day got worse. They lost a few more marquee players. They easily could have lost a few more. And I'm just here to tell you, it might be a take. It might be hyperbolic. But I think Billy Napier is truly trending as one of the worst hires in modern college football history. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what happened on National Signing Day because here's the thing about Billy Napier. Hasn't been good on the field. There's been embarrassment off the field. This 2024 recruiting class was supposed to be the sign that, hey, this guy knows what he's doing. He's got a plan. The problem was it crumbled like a Christmas cookie here over the last couple of weeks, okay? So the real story of Florida's National Signing Day, it didn't start on National Signing Day. It really started about five or six weeks ago when the class just started to fall apart. So this class reached, I believe, as high as number three in the fall during the football season. It might have even reached number two at various points, but really number three was kind of the high point. But it was really about five, six weeks ago when the losses on the field started that the cracks in the foundation of this recruiting class started as well. About three, four weeks ago, four to five star, depending on what recruiting service you look at, Defensive lineman named Jamonte Waller decommits from Florida, had been committed in the summer. He flips to Auburn. You have a four-star cornerback named Wardell Mack flips from Florida to Texas. You have, oh, by the way, a four-star offensive lineman, Nasir Johnson, flips from Florida to Georgia. You also have on top of that in recent days, and this was a big one, Xavier Filsimi a guy that many believe to be maybe the best safety in high school football. He had been trending to flip to Texas for a while. He has family in Texas. He has family in Florida. He's been committed to Florida. He flips to Florida. So even before National Signing Day, in the lead up, four elite prospects all flip. Well, National Signing Day comes and it gets worse. Four-star defensive lineman Amaris Williams from North Carolina had been committed to, to, to Florida for a while, he flips to Auburn. So if you're keeping score at home, that's two for Auburn, two for Florida, or two for two for Auburn, two for Texas, and one for Georgia. And then to just pour salt in the wound, a four-star linebacker, Adarius Hayes, flips to Miami. And so in total, you had six marquee recruits in about the last six weeks that were committed to Florida, that did not sign with Florida. Here is the crazy part. Florida's top two prospects on National Signing Day took forever to get their paperwork in. DJ Lagway, the quarterback that this entire class was built around, he's from Texas. I might have talked about him on the show. When Mike Elko got hired, there was buzz that he was at least meeting with Texas A&M. I was told that Florida held that one off. Then uh, a day before National Signing Day, Lincoln Riley reaches out. Lincoln Riley had previously recruited him. So that kid, it takes forever to get his paperwork in as he's talking to Texas A&M and USC. And then LJ McCray, many believe to be the best defensive lineman in high school football, said at the beginning of National Signing Day, I'm not signing a letter of intent after being committed to Florida. He does eventually sign with Florida. Let me just say this. If Billy Napier had lost DJ Lagway and LJ McCray, it wouldn't have happened, but I actually think it would have been a fireable offense um, right here, right now, because again, there's nothing positive going on on the field. And the recruiting class was the one thing that kind of sold you, okay, maybe this will get figured out in the long term. So if you lost those two, I think it would have been a fireable offense right away, but they got those two, but it doesn't change the fact that, listen, I'll be blunt. I don't know if I've ever seen a recruiting class fall apart like this over a five, six week period. This was a class that was rated as high as number three in the country about five, six weeks ago. It finished at number 15, number 15 in the country. By the way, there was another four-star, somebody that that flipped to Texas A&M. Now, there was mixed reports whether, whether Florida really wanted them, whatever. Maybe there was some stuff behind the scenes. But this is a debacle, and it leads to what I said a minute ago. This Billy Napier hire is trending as one of the worst hires I ever remember, okay? 
And some people would say, oh, it's early. He needs time, whatever. I'm just going to give you the facts on Billy Napier, okay? So Billy Napier, admittedly, he took over a bad situation from Dan Mullen. But he hasn't really done anything right. First of all, year one goes six and seven. They were really bad. And you say, well, it's Dan Mullen. It's this, it's that. You can blame him, blah, 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 this and that. This year, they go five and seven. So in total, when you include Dan Mullen's final season where they went six and seven, and then this past season where they went, or they last year they went six and seven, this year they go five and seven. That is the first time since the 1940s, since the 1940s that any team at Florida has lost, has had three straight losing seasons, okay? Listen, I get, even if Dan Mullen left a mess, Florida should never have back-to-back losing, never have three straight losing seasons, let alone back-to-back losing seasons under a first and second year head coach in the port. Florida should never be this bad, period. This is my belief. There is no reason for Florida to be this bad, but especially in the transfer portal era, when it's never been easier to acquire talent, Florida should never be this bad. Beyond that, it's not just that they're bad. It's that some of the losses are embarrassing. Arkansas doesn't win an SEC game except in the swamp. A week before they play Florida, they fire the offensive coordinator. Offense looks great. You sit there and say, well, maybe things are moving. No, the next week they go to Auburn and get destroyed. Lose to LSU when Jaden Daniels sets records with 606 yards of total offense. Ray Davis, 280 yards rushing for Kentucky. These are Madden numbers, and they get put up on the regular under Billy Napier. And so I'm just here to say, like, I don't root against the guy, but I am just here to say, like, I I don't know what else there is to say. Six and seven in year one, five and seven in year two, in an era where it's never been easier to bring in players. By the way, don't forget last year, and this is an important part too. Anyone else remember the Jaden Rashada debacle? Remember that kid? He was committed to Florida. We find out later he signs this insane NIL deal. It was like $13 million over the course of his four years in college. Then he goes to move in, and either the, 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 the collective says, we're not paying you, or we need to renegotiate the contract. So you're losing on the field. Your most high profile quarterback in your, or your most high profile player in your first class, it's a debacle. And then this year, you get as high as number three, and it completely falls apart. This falls on Billy Napier, man. And what's crazy about Billy Napier, for people who don't know the background, this is a guy that came in as people said he's one of the most organized, most disciplined. You know, he's got a plan for a plan for a plan. It seems like chaos at Florida. And you can sit there and say, well, it's a new world, NIL, portal, this, that. I don't know. Miami's got it figured out. Alabama's got it figured out. In one year, Hugh Freeze got it figured out. We're going to talk about him in a minute. Um, You know, Dan Lanning, it took a year and a half for him to figure it. didn't take a year and a half. He figured it out right away. But a year and a half, he's got a top five, top six class in the country. Sark figured it out. So don't tell me it's NIL. Don't tell me it's the portal. But this is a guy that was supposed to be organized, supposed to be the opposite of Dan Mullen, supposed to take recruiting seriously. And all it has been is one embarrassment after another. And so when I look at this whole situation, I see no reason to think it's going to get better. Now, again, if you lo- if you had lost DJ Lagway on Wednesday, the quarterback, then there's real talk of like, you should probably just be fired. Because the whole reason to bring him back for year three after two embarrassing seasons was this recruiting class headlined by a five-star quarterback. He keeps DJ Lagway. He keeps LJ McCray. But he lost seven high-profile players in the last five to six weeks. And oh, by the way, it ain't going to get any easier because did you see that schedule? We talked about it last week with the SEC schedule release. Uh, You got Miami to open. You got Central Florida in the out-of-conference. You got at Florida State. And then, oh, by the way, you got the normal SEC schedule, which includes at Tennessee, LSU at home, Georgia on a neutral. You add Texas next year. You add Ole Miss next year. I don't root against anybody. But this is really bad, and I don't see it getting any better. So the biggest loser by far on National Signing Day, Billy Napier, I don't think it's going to get any better. I have a feeling on the Aaron Torres Pod and Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel, most of next November is going to be spent on Florida football coaching candidates.